The Rubik's clock is a very easy puzzle to learn, and the goal is to get all of the clocks to point upwards on both sides. How this puzzle works is there are four dials that you can turn and four pins that can all be up or down. If a pin is up, then you can turn the dial closest to it to get all of the clocks around that pin to move. If you have multiple pins up, you can turn either of the dials next to these pins and it will move all of the clocks around both pins at the same time. And here's three pins and here's four pins. You can put a pin down and turn this dial, but we're not going to do that. To solve it, we start by making the cross on one side. We'll say the center clock counts as solved, and now we want to match this to any of the outer clocks, so I'll match it to this one. When I turn a dial, I don't want either of these two pins up, because then these two clocks will move together. So I can just use one of the other pins, and that can move the center clock to go match this one. I want to solve this one next, but instead of thinking about it as solving this one, I'll take what I've already solved and match it to this one. So how that can work is by turning this pin as it moves these two, but not this one. So then I can turn this dial and now they match. And I'll use this idea again. I'll take what I've already solved and match it to this one. So I can get this pin up and turn this dial. Next, I'll take what I've already solved and match it to this one. So now I can use two pins on this side to move all four at once and then match it to this one. Now I want them all pointing up so I can just use all of the pins up and turn any of the dials. Now the cross is solved. Next, we'll move on to the other side and solve the cross again. Now, it's important here that you don't turn a dial if its pin is down. If I turn this right now, it will mess up the cross from the first side. So make sure you only turn the dials next to up pins, that way it doesn't mess up the cross from the first side. So we do the exact same idea, and here it is again. The center is solved, and we match it to something else, so I can take this pin up and turn this side to get it to match this. Now I'll take what I solved and match it to another cross so I can use this pin up and turn this side. Then I'll take what I solved here, I'll turn this pin up and then match it to the next one. Now I'll take these four using these two pins and match it to the last one. For the second cross, you don't need to get them all pointing up yet. We can do that at the very end. The next thing we'll do is solve these four corners, which will actually solve the corners for both sides. Again, don't think about it like we're solving this clock. Think about it like we're getting every clock we've solved to match that one. How I can do that is put every pin up except for that corner. Now if I turn any of these three dials, it will turn everything except that corner. So I can now match it to that corner. Next I want to solve this corner, so I'll move this corner's pin down and turn any of the other dials, and now it matches. Next, this corner, I'll move this pin down and everything else up, match it, and then this one. Pin down, everything else up, and match like this. Next, just get all of the pins up and get them all facing up. Now, if you've done it right, the other side should still be solved. And that's it, you've solved the Rubik's clock. If you're trying to get fast at clock, I recommend this magnetic clock as it helps with control over the pins and with the dials. This is called the Chi Magnetic Clock, and you can find it at Speedcube Shop linked in the description below. And you can get it for cheaper if you use the discount code JPERM. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.